Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. We have an absolute bombshell of a video today from Donald Trump's youngest son, Baron Trump, okay? He just came out and made one of the biggest moves to help his father win the 2024 race against Lion Kamala Harris, like Trump calls her. Because Trump says, well, I can't call her Harris because nobody knows who I'm talking about. So I gotta call her Kamala, Lion Kamala. All right, well, Baron Trump is now helping his father with the 2024 campaign to help get the support of the young voters, okay? Baron Trump just turned 18, and Donald Trump, you know, we have less than three weeks away. Baron Trump is doing everything he can to get the support of the young people. Because, let's face it, Baron Trump just turned 18, so he knows exactly how to get the young people to support his father, right? It's through social media. Why do you keep seeing all of these huge clips, these viral clips of Donald Trump on your phone, on social media? It's because Donald Trump is doing these podcasts, these uh, collaborations, these interviews with young, uh, super talented streamers, influencers, social media stars, and Baron Trump and his best friend Bo are actually helping coordinate these people. Trump came out and said that Barron is like his official campaign advisor for all things Gen Z, meaning the younger people. And these are people who typically don't even turn out to vote, but now they're more fired up than ever before because they now see, look, I have to get involved with this now because we have a decision. Do we want Donald John Trump or do we want Lion Kamala, all right? Young people, they know if we want to achieve the American dream, they got to go full Trump, baby, all right? So we're going to bring on Baron Trump. But before we do, we're going to read the Bible. We're going to pray because God comes first. Amen? Comment amen down below, my friends, if you believe God comes first. Today's Bible reading comes from the book of Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Amen. Comment amen down below. And now let's dive in. Let's bring on Donald John Trump and Baron Trump. So Baron Trump has become a crucial power player in Melania and Donald's next move and their move back into the White House. Baron Trump is taking a major role in helping make sure that his father does secure another term again, you know, in the race against Lion Kamala. The shy youngest son, they're calling him, of the former president and his wife has never been more in the spotlight. But what is behind thrusting him into the public eye now? Well, as you remember, he just turned 18 and he got a standing ovation. And Donald Trump joked that, welcome to the scene now, Baron. And now he's getting more involved than ever before. Watch this as he gets a standing ovation. Then we'll get into the news with what he's doing. Watch this, guys. This is so, so cool. He's growing up, and remember, he, the media used to make fun of him, used to say that he has autism, used to just, you know, try to pick fun at him, but he's grown up and he's becoming really successful. He just got into, just started going to school at one of the best universities in the country. He's now going to college, got into every college he wanted to, and he made his choice. And he's a, he's a very good guy, I'll tell you. You know, I'm not allowed to call them boy, but he is my boy. He's my boy. They're all my boys, right? When you have sons, you can be any age. They're your boy. They're always going to be. And he's a very special guy. Baron Trump. This is the first time he's ever Look at Trump Jr. too. The whole family's there, guys. Eric Trump there as well. Yeah. 
That's the first time he's done it. That's the first time, right? Hey, you're pretty popular. I, he might be more popular than Don and Eric. We got to talk about. It. Hey, Don, we got to talk about. It. <laughs> All right. So, Baron, it's good to have you. Welcome to the scene, Baron. I don't know. He had such a nice, easy life. Now it's a little bit changed. Anyway. I mean, he really is growing up to be like a younger version of Trump, of Donald Trump, his father. Like. Bayer and Trump could be the future of the Republican Party, and we're seeing that right now. Again, look at this. Donald Trump came out and said, Barron is my advisor on all things Gen Z, really helping him secure that support from younger people, right? Donald Trump has credited Barron and his children for giving him tips on keeping up to date with the latest trends that appeal to Gen Z. After being asked by Fox News' Maria Bartiromo about whether his son had influenced his decision to appear on several podcasts, the former president admitted he had. So Trump says a little bit. He tells me about all the hot guys, people I've never heard of. Dad, that guy is hot. Trump says his baron is helping a little bit in Gen Z voter outreach. Former President Donald Trump revealed Sunday that his youngest son is helping him a little bit on his strategies in reaching out to Gen Z voters, a coveted voting bloc in the 2024 presidential election. Baron Trump, the youngest of f Trump's five children who started college earlier this year, has given his father some advice on who he should do podcasts with, including people the former president has, quote, never heard of. So... This year, Trump has done podcast interviews with people like social media influencer Logan Paul, Lex Friedman, Aiden Ross, right? Uh, Baron Trump helped push his father to do that groundbreaking interview with Aiden Ross. Look at this right here. Trump says it was his son Baron who pushed him to do this interview. This was the interview that actually broke the internet. I think this probably might be one of the biggest interviews of all time just because of how popular this guy is with young people on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I mean, these some of these clips, it's estimated that this interview alone, these clips of Trump, they went so viral, over 1 billion views now. Uh, over a billion views, these clips have been uh, seen. That's a, uh, one estimate. I mean, it's hard to track based on all, you know, some of them getting over 50 million views, whatever. But Donald Trump's teenage son, Barron, seemingly influenced the former president to pursue an interview with his quote-unquote friend, Aiden Ross. So, Baron Trump is very connected, my friends. Aiden Ross went in to Mar-a-Lago and actually met up with uh, Baron Trump. There's a photo of Baron Trump, Aiden Ross. Let's see if we have the photo. Here we do. Look at this. There's Aiden Ross right there. There's Baron's best friend, Bo. Bo is playing a massive role in helping uh, Donald Trump as well. Because remember, Baron is not really on social media. Baron Trump actually used to get bullied on social media a lot. And so he kind of took a step back from being on social media. But remember, Bo is actually helping coordinate some of these interviews on behalf of of, of Baron, right? I mean, Baron Trump, um, I, mean, I mean, even Melania clapped back about this. Let's Lady watch. Melania is in full mama bear mode today, blasting a TV host for making a joke about 14 year old Baron. Disturbing. I love it. John Henson, who hosts the Food Network's Halloween baking competition and ABC's Wipeout, tweeted on Father's Day, I hope Baron gets to spend today with whoever his Wow. Dad. I'm sorry, I hate that guy. This guy, host of the Wipeout? Why is he talking trash about Baron? I hope Baron gets to spend today with whoever his dad is on Father's Day. That is so insensitive, so disrespectful. That is not a joke to talk about. I mean, there's so many people out there who don't have dads, too. I mean, it's just, gosh spend today with whoever his dad is. Melania is now firing back, calling the joke inappropriate and insensitive. Good, Melania, good. She says, as with every other administration, a minor child should, ne should be off limits and all allowed to grow up with no judgment or hate from strangers. 
I mean, what a joke. Chelsea Clinton was 12 when her father was elected. The Obama daughters were very young, even younger than that, I believe. But we should all treat them. I used to say you've got to treat them like Fabergé eggs. They're off limits. Yes. You don't touch them. You don't talk about them. Henson. Oh, and then he goes, the joke was aimed at Trump. And the mere mention of Barron's name doesn't mean it's at his expense. Oh, my God. What a effing idiot. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to poke fun at Barron. Dude, Baron was the third word. This guy sucks. The wipeout, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. What a joke. What an absolute joke. Uh, but now, this is Donald Trump talking about Baron and how he's helping him. Watch this, guys. You on live now, in addition to everything else? Because, you know, congratulations. You show my son is saying, Dad, you got to do those guys. Those guys are great. You know, I have a son who's 6'9". Oh, for real? How tall are you? 6'7". Yeah. So Donald Trump is doing all of these interviews now, and he's saying Baron Trump is helping him push to do that. Like he keeps mentioning Baron. I got, got, got me by a couple. He's got I, know, I saw you. the little look to no, it. No, I got you. He's like everybody. I say, how tall are you? I'm just curious. Mm. No, he's uh, he's tall and he's a good boy. He's a uh, Good student, very good student. Mm. Well, we wouldn't, we would not be here today without uh, Dana White. We we've established a relationship with him. We've met you at UFC a couple of times. And, There's nobody uh, like him. Yeah, he's he's you know, incredible. I, just, I can't. I just. You always say that everybody's replaceable, right? I don't think anybody could do what he does. He's done that, and you know, built billions of dollars of value. Just because, but there's nobody that can. There's nobody like this guy. He's just a fantastic person, and he's so loyal. And I've known him a long time. So this was a brand new interview that Trump just did on Bustin' with the Boys. Remember, guys, Trump is going around doing tons and tons of different interviews. You guys remember Trump was on the Logan Paul podcast called Impulsive. This one right here. Um, this one got over 6 million views just on YouTube. But hey, I mean, this is... Such a massive collaboration because these guys, they just have such a big audience. But not only that, Trump also went on the Full Send podcast. This one right here. Um, and it's getting so many views. They get 3 million views here. Baron Trump is behind a lot of these interviews, my friends, because Baron's fans of these guys. I mean, this is so epic. So epic. The first time we met you, 2020, Air Force One with Dana White. Dana White set it all up. Great friend. And then... Uh, Is he incredible, by the way? He's the best. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. And then we had you on the podcast after, I think it was the with Afghanistan withdrawal, the horrendous right. withdrawal. That, that and then you. we golfed with you. We've seen you at UFC, and now you're back here for the third time. So we just want to thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's good. So Baron is, like, legitimately... Donald Trump's advisor on all things Gen Z. Like, how cool is that, my friends? So cool to see. This is uh, Patrick Bet David talking about uh, Baron Trump and just how, you know, how much Baron is getting involved. Let's tune in. Baron Trump. So if you can pull up this picture, Rob, that went viral uh, uh, with uh, uh, Justin Waller posted it. This is the picture that was posted. Can you go to his tweet? Dude. Go to Justin Waller's Twitter account. So this was... If you go to Justin Waller's Twitter account, right there, he posts this picture, okay, which gets, how many views does it get? Go to the about 42, Boy, holy wow. shit, he gets 42 million views. So this is a picture of uh, Kobe to the left. The man. And then you got Justin with the chest hair to the second to the left. He looks uh, like a, you know, a Brad Pitt guy, good guy. Then you got the short guy in the middle, Whoa. Aaron Trump. <laughs> yeah, he's six, six seven. seven, okay, six, seven. Then it's me, then it's Bo. And Bo and uh, Baron are uh, best friends. Uh, I think Bo's father is a senator, ex-senator, I believe. Go to the... Uh, Missouri, yeah. Rob, can you go oh, wow. to the reaction people had towards this picture? The guy that reacted... Yeah, it went so crazy viral. And even Jesse Waters is on this show. I was like, yeah. You know, Kobe and this and this yeah. and that. And everybody's kind of talking about their sob story. Yeah. And then Baron's like, yeah, same here. I mean, I, <laughs> I was born in a penthouse of a building all the way up the top. Life was hard. Talk about being fed by a silver <laughs> spoon. What would, who would ever eat food with a silver spoon? Mine was gold. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm doing a podcast. Wow. I get an email saying Baron Trump wants to have dinner with you because he follows the content. I'm like, okay, Sam, can you verify this? Sam makes a few phone calls. says, no, it's real. That's the day we did the podcast. So Baron Trump actually reached out to Patrick Bet David. You know what is so cool about this whole thing, guys? 
is Patrick Bet David is the guy who is was pushing um, Joe Rogan. Let me let me pull this up real quick. Patrick Bet David is the same guy who started to push Joe Rogan to do the interview with Donald Trump. So when are you having Trump on? I don't know. Okay. You, you, the, I don't know. Maybe. Looks like you got something. Maybe. Okay, good. That's good. I think that's... Uh... I look, at a certain point in time, it's just like, it would be interesting to hear his perspective on a lot of things. I would like to know what is it like when you actually get into office. I would like to know things like, what what is it like versus perception? Yeah. What is it actually like when you get in that building? Like, what what, what are you greeted with? When do you know that people are fucking with you? When do you know the intelligence agency is lying to you? Like when you decided to fire Comey, what was the thought? How much did you know? Like what, what's the machine like? What is, what is the deep state really like? Really like? Because we have all these, you know, smoky room perceptions like from the Bill Hicks joke where they show you the Kennedy assassination from an angle you've never seen before. You know, what is the machine that runs this country? Because it's very clear that it's not as simple as elected representatives that are doing the will of the people. It's not. Basically, we have confirmation that Baron Trump got Patrick Bet David to come to Mar-a-Lago. And then guess what happened? This guy, Patrick Bet David, just interviewed Donald J. Trump. A son and a father go through three phases. Phase number one, you idolize them. Then phase two, you demonize them. Phase three, you humanize them. Okay? Very interesting. Like so Baron Trump basically got this interview all set up and these clips are going absolutely viral. Look at this, Ob uh, Donald Trump blames Obama, not 890,000 views in a day. Tr uh, this one, 500,000 views in a day. These videos are going absolutely viral. I have to play this one because it's so, such an awesome question. Remember, Baron Trump is behind all this, guys. So you get in, when you work for a new company, you get a job, you go to HR. And then when you work for the company, that's a big company. Let's just say they got 100,000 employees. Let's say you're working for an IBM. Let's say you're working for Boeing. Hundreds of thousands of employees. You're going to kind of find out who the manipulators are. You're going to find out who the power players are. You're going to find out who the EF Hutton is. You're going to find out who the guy that get the job done, the guy that even though you replace him, he left. People are still talking to the guy because maybe they want you to fail. So they're still, you know, all this stuff that happens, right? 100%. When you went in, day one, you're a president. How did you decipher between knowing who were really the power players, who were the manipulators, who were the ones that would threaten them behind closed doors? How did you go through that process when you first got in? So my problem was I was never, I mean, I was in Washington. They say, the, the fake news said this, So, but let's assume it's true for a change. 17 times. I was there 17 times. I never stayed over. So I was not a Washington person. I didn't know people in Washington. When you became president? You when were... I became, yeah. When I became president, right. in other words... I ran for president. I was only in Washington 17 times. And most of it was I was building a hotel, a beautiful hotel that I sold. It's now the Waldorf Astoria. And I built that, did a great job, sold it, made some money. And it, <laughs> he probably made like 100 million bucks. <laughs> Trump's so humble. Yeah, made, made a little bit of money. It was great. But that was most of the time. I was only there. Think of it. Beautiful. I was only there. That's it, right? Gosh. Uh, that's a beautiful job in a great location. That, don't that is a... I mean, Trump, like, I hate how Letitia James and all these freaking... Oh, God, these idiots, like, go after Trump and Kamala Harris. Like, you think they're putting down Trump like he doesn't know what he's doing? Look what he built. This was just something he built off, off a whim. Oh, yeah, I built that in D.C., uh, built it, sold it. I mean, the Trump's buildings that he builds are the most beautiful buildings in the world. It's crazy how they just put him down like that. Maybe I shouldn't have sold it. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. No, I'm looking at it. I'm saying, ah, <laughs> that is that. a beautiful project. No, I did a great job with it. My whole family did, uh, Ivanka and Don and everybody, and Eric Eric did a fantastic job. But anyway, I built that. But 17 so days? I, was, I didn't know 17 that. 17 days total. Never stayed up. Okay, but that's what they say. But it's about right. In other words, I wasn't a Washington person. So all of a sudden, I'm president. I land on Air Force <laughs> One. You never saw so many motorcycles and cars and everything. Mm -hmm. Military mm -hmm. marching. Everybody's marching. 
And I'm saying, I said to my wife, oh, and we're going down Pennsylvania Avenue and we're in the back of the beast, you know, the world's mm -hmm. longest army tank, right? And we're in the back of the beast and I look to the left and there's the building and we're going the opposite direction of the roads. You know, the roads are closed. On that day, you could have gone if you pre any, any way you want. So we're going, <laughs> and I say, look, there's the hotel and there's the White House. A couple of blocks further is the White House. Here's the, I say, did you ever see anything so incredible? This is surreal. I have the brand new hotel and I have the White House and I'm president. But here's the bad part. I didn't know anybody in Washington other than some politicians. And I knew them because I was a contributor, not because I was a politician. Because I had only done this a few months, you know. I ran. And That's I, crazy. It's such a crazy story. But you're in the business of uh, reading bullshit. You, you're I am. In the business of no, reading, I am. Like manipulators. Yeah, but there's, a, there's a lot of people. So what happens is I had to rely on people for advice. And largely I got it right. You know, don't forget, you only hear about like stupid people like a Bolton or I don't want to mention even Barr because he endorsed me the other day. You saw that. He endorsed me strongly. <laughs> I was impressed by that. But I put people in there who I I made mistakes. But I made, I got it mostly right. Great trade people. I had great trade. That's not the question I'm asking. If I may, here's what I'm asking. What I'm asking, I'm not even asking about, hey, why would you hire these guys the swamp? Yeah. And that question's already been addressed. I'm not interested in that question. The question I'm asking is, you're in. You're in a new space. Who were really the powerful people? Was it the director of CIA? Was it FBI? Was it the big pharma? Was it military industrial complex guys? Patrick Bet David, he's like a big leader. He's like a manly man. He kind of just cut off Trump there. But you'll notice Trump doesn't get mad at all because you can see Patrick Bet David, he just wants he just wants to know, he wants to understand. He doesn't have any bad intentions. So cutting somebody off in this way is actually a respectful thing because he just say, Trump, hey, you know, I've heard that story before. I want, this is what I really want to know. This is what the people, my viewers want to know. Gosh, this is such a cool collaboration and Baron Trump helped facilitate this. Is that our general dynamics? Who were the people that are like, it. oh, I got you. You have, I, I never it. thought you had power. Who actually has the power? The most powerful person by far, the president. Power over everybody. Power, the power is enormous. Most people don't believe that. It's, it, it is. But Gosh, I really want to cry because I just, Trump is such a brilliant man, such a powerful, strong man, and I absolutely love it. Um, and you guys saw this. You did a lot this, of podcasts recently. What? This is the pot. This is con they're confirmed now that Trump will go on the Joe Rogan podcast. You're doing a lot of podcasts recently. One that I would love to see you on is I think Joe Rogan has to have you on. Yeah. Yeah. Would Would you do that? Oh, sure, I would. I think Joe, like besides us, Joe. I, mean, I think I'm doing it. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you are going to do Joe Rogan? Yeah, I am. Joe Rogan's the best in the game, for sure. And I think, yeah. you know, did him Joe really become... So, so Trump is now doing Joe Rogan. And it had a lot to do with Patrick Bet David pushing Joe Rogan to do the podcast. And Baron Trump was the one who invited Patrick Bet David to Mar-a-Lago. So Baron Trump, in a majorly direct way is the whole reason why Trump is gonna be interviewing Joe Rogan. So it's just such a massive play that not a lot of people, you know, because a lot of people don't like talking about Baron Trump, you know, they call him autistic, they call him this, they call him that, but he actually had a massive influence on this podcast coming together. I mean, it's so cool. I'm doing a podcast. Wow. I get an email saying Baron Trump wants to have dinner with you because he follows the content. I'm like, okay, Sam, can you verify this? Sam makes a few phone calls. Says, no, it's real. That's the day we did a podcast with Stephen A. Smith. So I said, I won't be able to make it because we're doing dinner. They asked seven o'clock. They said they changed. They're willing to do 830. I said, okay, we finished with Stephen A. Me, you, and Tom, we head up there. Tom meets us there. Me and you drive up there, right? Yep. With the top down and your hair is all messed up. My hair is like a crazy person. We get there and Baron comes out. <laughs> And we go sit down and have dinner with Baron. Now you gotta realize, I'm so curious who this kid is, right? He just turned 20, uh, 18, 18 years old, March 20th. And so you're watching him. So, so what are you gonna be doing? You're gonna go to school, you're gonna do this, and he's kind of going through the whole process. What he's not gonna be doing, what he's gonna be doing. I've never 
seen Tom laugh this hard for an hour and a half. Tom is one of those guys that if we go to dinner, no one's going to talk more than Tom. And Tom can go. He's a professional talker, yeah. and he's going to give you a lot of history lessons, everything, because he's yeah. so well read. He's a modern day Wikipedia, the living Wikipedia. <laughs> it's Tom Ellsworth. Yeah. If Wikipedia goes out of business, Tom. we're all safe here. <laughs> so just Tom. Just yeah, say, we're good. Check Tom. Tom didn't say a single yeah. word. Yep. <laughs> Nothing, Jesse. For an hour and a half, and we just watched Baron run dinner with stories, oh entertainment, my God. everything. What was your experience watching I, I just mind you, you don't, it's 18. You know what I was when I was at 18? I was in the military. I was acting like a freaking maniac. It's witty, smart, hilarious, you know, polit. Like, he was smart on politics. He's like, you know, everybody's always going to fight. There's left, there's right. I think uh, one of the hardest I laugh is when he goes, look, Mike, because all of a sudden the music just comes on loud, right, Jesse? And we're like, what the hell is that? He's like, my freaking dad's the DJ. All you see is uh, <laughs> the president on his iPad, the lights in his face. Nothing Bro. compares. <laughs> Nothing compares. Everybody who talks about going to Mar-a-Lago, meeting the Trump family, they all like, they all talk about it like it, it was the best experience of their entire life. Like, just listen to the way that Justin Waller talks about it. This is another podcast influencer guy that Baron Trump invited. One thing I saw online that went crazy viral uh -huh. was your meeting that you had with like PBD, Colby Covington, yeah. and Barron, yeah. and a couple other people. How did that invitation come out? Like, yeah, I got a mess. I got a message on Instagram from a, a young man that was with Trump in a photo. He's like, "Hey, Barron like likes your content. He's a fan of your content, and he'd like to invite you to Mar-a-Lago." That's exactly how it happened, and I said, "I'll be there." And this was a friend of Baron? Yeah, it's Baron's best friend, Bo. Bo and, and how Go follow Bo on Instagram. Shut up. I Bo. follow him. Um, Bo's, Bo's the truth, man. He's awesome. How how did this interaction go? I'm guessing you, there are certain details that you're you know not allowed to share or anything. It was incredible. It was incredible. I uh, I went to dinner and then it was it was me, Kobe, PBD, Baron, Bo, uh, another member of Mar a Lago, uh, my boy Moore. And, and uh, we're sitting at the table, talk. So this is the guy that came, his name's Justin Waller. You guys probably saw this photo with Baron. Uh, but this guy, he's a, a young influencer with over a million followers. He's friends with the Tate Bros. He's a young, masculine entrepreneur, businessman, works construction. But he's this type of, of guy who young men look up to. Like these are the types of leaders. They're young, masculine, conservative men right? They hang out with their friends with Tucker Carlson. <laughs> like the young men in America, they're being deprived of masculinity. Why do you think all of these young men go to watch the UFC? They like Dana White. They like Joe Rogan. They like Donald J. Trump. It's because they want male leaders. They're not looking up to Tim Waltz, who's walking out, looks like he's on the prices, right? They're, they're, these young guys, they're not looking up to Tim Waltz. They're looking up to guys like this, all right? Maybe you think it's cringe, maybe you don't, but they drive Lamborghinis. I mean, they don't all drive Lamborghinis, but they work out, <laughs> they make money, they do business. I mean, these are like, you know, masculine dudes who people like, they're smoking cigars. So in any case, Baron Trump is friends with these guys and Patrick Bet David, you know, the guy who pushed Joe Rogan to do, hey, you gotta interview Joe, you gotta interview Donald Trump, you gotta interview Donald Trump, and now, that interview is going down. So Baron Trump is like behind it all. So I haven't really heard anybody else kind of make this argument about how big of a role Baron Trump is playing. But I think Baron Trump is making one of the biggest, playing one of the biggest roles in helping his father in this race against Lion Kamala. Let's listen in real quick. This is Melania Trump talking about raising Baron. And I looked at that picture and I said, this is a working mom's life. We can all relate to this. Everything's chaotic, everything's hectic, but it's so much fun. And everyone tells us to enjoy those moments because they're fleeting and your kids grow up and it just flies by. When you look at that picture, what was happening in that moment? When I see it, that was the, the time that I did um, a QVC collection 
my jewelry which and sold out in 45 minutes it did yes it was very successful so I was doing all at the same time uh, working playing with Baron he has his uh, own time with you know his car and his books and we talking so I think it's very important that we show our children that we are working too uh, to give them an example how life is that they see us that we are productive that we have an ideas that ideas comes to life and uh, that's how I was showing to Baron. People don't give Donald Trump and Melania Trump and Ivana Trump enough credit uh, as to how you know well they raised their children rest in peace to Ivana <sighs> so sad but I mean all of the Trump children are growing up to just be such incredible people I mean it's so awesome like take a look at this here well, it's amazing what's going on, and uh, we're having fun. I like to keep it life as normal as possible for my son, Baron, and uh, I'm a full-time mom, and I love it. So I decided not to be in the campaign so much, but I support my husband 100%. I haven't seen a lot of Melania lately. How's she doing? And how's Baron doing? Because I know he's senior in high school now. Yeah, he is. Family. He's doing really well. He's in school. Uh, she's doing very well. She's very strong, very, um, very even keeled, and she's a very good woman, as you know. Uh, she was a very popular first lady. I mean, I go out to rallies and they have pictures of Melania with "We love our first lady" with so many posters. You know, where they're in the audience and there. People love Melania. People want a good first lady again. You know, people are dying to get. Uh, <laughs> A really good first lady because people don't like Jill. Jill is selfish and Jill, uh, you know, she she wants the power. She's power hungry and she she lied to people about how well Joe Biden is doing. So anyways, massive update from Baron Trump really coming out to support his father right now. All the Trump children, honestly, the whole Trump family, too. I mean, everybody, they're really coming out strong. And it's like the Trump family is so amazing. I mean, you guys saw the, the the videos of them at the RNC. I mean, so supportive. You even had the granddaughter, Kai Trump, give a speech. And, you know, Trump Jr., the whole family, the grandchildren there. And, you know, this was the last RNC. So it's like they're growing up together and they're all by Trump's side. And it's like, where's Kamala's family? You see this family and people want to say, oh, we don't want this. We want Kamala instead. Kamala's husband, Doug, cheated on his first wife with the nanny and got the nanny pregnant. And then they had an, uh, an abortion. I mean, Doug's daughter, I mean, I'm really not trying to compare, but like this chick with the armpit hair, I mean, it's just, I mean, there's such a stark contrast between, I mean, this is, this is Doug's daughter, right? I mean, it's, I, I can't, oh, is this one of them? I mean, do whatever you want, but the armpit hair on, on, <laughs> I just not, oh my, oh, I think that's somebody else. That's Madonna's daughter. Anyways, I'm going to end the video there because I'm starting to ramble, but let me know your thoughts down below, guys, and God bless.